All right, so I'm just going to run through some charts here, and I want to run a four-hour robot or a four-hour playback of the market, and I want to trade what I see and what I think based on um, that kind of simple checklist. And really, my checklist here is going to be about pips because uh, this is British Pound on the four-hour chart uh, last few days. And you, you see this big black line here. Um, sorry, I had to say that, but that's what we're talking about here is um, just uh, binary. So there's just boys and girls here. You're either long or you're short. There is no fucking... Well, you're... Okay, you, so you want to be on the uh, unisex team. This is where you're not in the market at all. So psychologically speaking, if you don't have a bias or if you have a bias, but you're waiting for your entry because you perceive this isn't a downtrend here. So if you just kind of pulled somebody, um, asked somebody, well, what do you think about this chart here? And they would say, well, it looks bearish. You know, it's down. All my moving averages are, are certainly uh, responding to that. Uh, moving averages are just taking a price and smoothing out that data. And depending, here I have the one period moving average, the white one. So this is kind of my uh, baseline. So I try, maybe I can appeal to the mindset of the no-nonsense people by using uh, terms... Uh, that are just about uh, clunky things, you know. See, the problem when you go down this um, highway of there's of, of speaking in terms of 300 indicators, this is like having 300 religions, and you're still fucking killing people. So you're still an asshole, and you've got 500 relig religions, and you've got all these self-help books and all these diet books, but you see these obese motherfuckers. You think, well, you know what? Maybe... That is just their setting, their baseline. They just gonna they're they're gonna be that person. So when it goes to trading, I'm only describing what I can tolerate because after watching and trading for years, I can only tolerate so much. Um, okay, speculation. So if you say that the market's going down, right there you're in trouble, in my opinion, because now you can only see sells. You're blinded to the buys because, well, you know, and, th and this is where you'll find common ground with somebody um, politically because you'd say, well, I bo we both agree that murder's bad. Okay, but then, but if you're going to kill an evil person, it's okay, kind of. See, now this is the tipping point, the window and the same thing in the trading world, like, is this a buy? Well, on the long-term trader view, you know, if you look at the market and you're going to hold that trade for six months as opposed to six minutes, that's a completely different um, world to live in. So I decided that based on the leverage I'm using, which is, uh, key to maximizing the trade because if you had that if you had a million dollars of trading a million dollar positions at max inside of this uh, Hugo's way that's what they allow me on the demo max is a um, thousand tickets I think so yeah and but the margin so the margin will get to be about twenty four hundred dollars that's the max okay now I could take this account and I could make so much money you wouldn't believe it but you know how much work that takes that means that you've got to actually pull the trigger on these trades or place the limits even so you see this little limits i placed here and this is just a scant of what i've done because i'm trading in this demo alone with fake money i traded i've traded at least i would say ten thousand trades maybe twenty thousand trades or something the account's been up to 24 and I can have this account at hundred grand if I really, but, uh, the reason why I can't read the why it's a limit is because to go from, uh, 10 grand to, to 20 grand or five grand, I think start with five grand, 20 grand is that, all right, great. Now, now what, I can just retire the account and live off it and just go, you know, we'll just wait until it gets back to five grand and then we'll put some work into making money because there's so many trades here on the four hour chart. I'm sure you can see Now that's 10 pip grid. 
on the 100 pip is the big black and the 10 pip grid here you can I, I hope you can understand that if I placed um, two Ks instead of one case here now I'm gonna make more but I'm gonna risk more so there's a there's also a limit to this account because the broker put one on it the broker saying you can only trade a thousand tickets well there's your money management this account being what it is and I know the greed in your mind would say well fucking a increase your size and um make a bunch of money like dude okay now if you don't know what you're you don't know the kind of uh, dangers that exist in prices that have never been seen in history. You're making new prices on the Dow Jones right now. The, the Bitcoin um, popped its cork. Now it dipped. Well, if you saw it dip below 30,000, I was curious to watch it. I put it on the five minute chart and I watched it Monday morning come dip below and just tag into like the abyss. Okay. Now this is the scalp. I was jumping around here, but, you know, if you, I don't know what to say, you know. Uh, I'm trying to bring it to the real world occasionally, right? Because you can talk in all these fucking Gartley patterns to your fucking balls in, in, implode. But it's like, come on, man. You've got to be able to fucking trade, you know. Like, you should be able on a sunny night to fucking get in a goddamn 1K. I, and, and this poor girl, I don't know, she's just a fucking watch my journey of this mindful uh, mindless trading girl but you know it's cute okay she's cute so you got to give her the cute break and it's funny that you know women they want to have this well on this and that yeah but this is the same you're just rehashing it with a girl's voice and i i have nothing against her her tonality right sounds beautiful like let's bang but Hey, you know, we don't give a, f I mean, what the fuck? And the people are so, oh, you're, you know, doing so well as a trader. You're just completely never going to, you're not trading it as a, a, you're like the guy at the guitar center, right? Are you trying to be a rock star or are you just having fun? You're just having fun. There's no way that you can pick and put 1.5% risk into a one idea one idea and i'm gonna babysit this trade and scalp and then at the end of the day then you see the kind of really bad trades she's done where she's like yeah i did this scalp i was trying to scalp and i got in got out get in get out yeah well no shit you're, you're on a giant spread i mean some of the stuff you know you can't scalp on the guppy with a fucking eight pip spread can you so now there's this huge uh leap between and then you have the the people that literally make a living talking about the market is just incredible, you know, and you're just like, wow, if you knew that much, wouldn't you just trade it? I mean, you're stuck with this. The ICT mentorship, my God, I would never, I can't, I barely have enough energy and responsibility to do what I do as it is. How am I going to take in, well, I got to check my membership. Did, honey, did anybody sign up this month for my ridiculous rants? <laughs> I don't know. I, I just not me. Even the music thing, like if you paid me, I was listening to Britney Spears. Holy shit. You know, when you got handlers that handle you to the point where you're a fucking slave. I mean, what is the difference, man? And, you know, the this, this, even the whale, who's the whale that blew out, you know, all that money in that brokerage firm? Of course, you come in, dude, I, I guarantee you any fucking account is blow upable. Now, it is true that if you stick with the 1K program, this is my uh, uh, Traders Anonymous, uh, like now, if you like trading, which I love it. So I decided, well, I'll just set my fucking uh, phasers on stun and I'll just stun people. I won't kill anybody. I won't kill myself either, but. I've gotten just annihilated on trades where I thought, dude, like, I mean, this is fuck. I mean, 300 K I'm like, dude, this is going to be a sweet fucking trade. And then, um, not realizing that the pattern, like I said, the time of day is so critical that you had waiting for nine 30 in the morning because at nine 30 in the morning is the, if you watch the markets on a tick chart on every instrument in a, in a, you watch as you come into the five minutes before 9.30 in the morning, five minutes after 9.30 in the morning, the five-minute robots and the five-minute people are taking trades on that fucking five-minute candle. That is five minutes after the bottom of the hour at 9.30 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. This is the most cliche market in the world. This is the most dumb shit 
price action, price behavior in the world, right? Well, why, why is it so hard, right? Because people, if your algorithm doesn't know when 9.30 in the morning is, in other words, you're, you're moving averages and all this bullshit, you're going to get sideswiped by cash money coming into the market when the markets really do open. So there's a there's a prelude and then there's there's a you know there's an intro, then there's the ex then there's the fucking uh, chorus which would be the trend, then we get to the verse we get to the complexities the bridges we get to the Asian session the hemming you know hemming and hawing and markets sideways. Um, now I noticed I was trading uh, the year the the dollar against the yen and the and the euro against the dollar. And the reason why I was trading those two at the same time is because they both had the same volatility and I could use the same scripts nearly across that, those instruments because I cannot trade the British pound with my euro scripts because my euro scripts are fucking eight pip stops. My British pound scripts would need to be fucking 20 pip stops to do the same pattern. So I'm going to trade the euro and the dollar and the, the dollar to the yen because then I can see when the dollar's getting beat, you can see it when US markets open, you can see, okay, now they're synced. Now there's a war on. But in the prelude to that, you could actually be long the dollar yen and long the euro to the dollar and be making money, which I was doing on a very small experiment where I placed limits in the other instrument now this is where it becomes like an orchestration and uh, that's about the limit for me because those two instruments right there is really like i'm i have the dollar as a central um, focus right and those are the most liquid instruments in forex so the reason why is because this very tight spread and i can run in a um now I don't I can realize that when they decorrelate, this is typically like or they may correlate when London opens. So when you go to Asia, stuff's just meandering around and poking around and there's really not there hasn't been any big moves unless it's the, the tsunami that I think was eleven years ago. I traded that on a nano account and made eighty dollars and lost eighty dollars in I think forty seconds because the market was so on fire uh, as it opened at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that thing opened up and went nuts. And this is on a broker called, um, I think it's still there, Asian broker. And they had great, I mean, it's still there, InstaForex it's called. So InstaForex was one of my first uh, nano accounts i think they probably still do nano there um if you if you're over there see that's the problem you know this whole thing you can see that the dot frank is deeper than or frank dot is deeper than you could even imagine right it's, it's fucking systemic there's just systemic corruption you know this is how it is but you know this is the argument that people make about forex is that oh it's you know it is over the counter that's rigged and this and that but you know what when it opens at 5 p.m., so we can gap open. Uh, with Bitcoin, it's not going to do that. But so Bitcoin is a trading instrument. It's not an investment. I don't know why people think it's a store of value momentarily, like any store of value. The dollar is the most stable fucking thing in the world, dude. Actually, a, a, a dynamic microphone or just a guitar. Um, and they're getting cheaper too, but and they're getting better. But what do you consider to be a standard of value? And if I had a truckload of lumber right now, wouldn't you just be like, oh, dude, just, you better store that. Now I store it until it rots. And then I'm like, mm, I guess I should have sold that. Now, the mindset of a trader, you know, for me, I'm almost looking at everything as a trade. Am I going to make a payments on that? Or am I going to buy that outright and spend all my cash and have no security, right? So am I going to risk my whole account? And some fucking dumb shit algorithm. Now, I know that, yes, I could take you to the moving averages and I could cherry pick all the winning trades out of the moving average chart. And I could say, well, if we put an ATR filter on this and we just put another filter, another, uh, and then I want a little confirmation and you're just going to trade one position. You've just destroyed the world. Now, you could actually trade uh, your, your, your ridiculous algorithms with 
a scaled in and scaled out approach because I don't think um, if you don't have a soft target and a soft stop, I don't, I don't, I think you're destroying the idea of having a nano or a micro account. And yes, I did pull the trigger. I do pull the trigger sometimes in one case and just over and over and put on a 20 K literally, you might as well just pull the 20 K, you know, but I only do that because I'm just, I don't have the patience to, to, uh, I just want it over with. So this is my, uh, laziness, I suppose, costing me money because what I should really be doing is buying a 1k and inside that script, I have to buy a half a pip deeper. I will buy on limit. So I've been trading on limits almost exclusively and the market order is kind of a, oh fuck, really? And now, I, so I'm already getting in a 50K and I'm like, they're going to take it lower. So this, I'm building a long position. Imagine now that markets come down, I'm in a 50K, I'm underwater, kind of. I've scalped out a few. Imagine that the London's about to open. <laughs> okay, the volatility is going to go either up or down. It does not matter. In my system, it does not matter whether they rape it up or rape it down. It does if the vacuum is huge, right? So... On this chart here, I'm just going to go to the charts now. Out of nowhere, after 16 minutes of, of, of nonsense. But I'm just going to go into the way I see the market. And, of course, maybe it helps, maybe it hurts. But, like I said, there's, we have that disclaimer, right, in the, in the, in the thing. Now, th this is the four-hour chart. And we're going we're gonna to rehearse the four-hour trades in, in real time and and uh, playing back the market. So this is the, 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 the rehearsal is really key. You kind of want to, um, so when you're playing scales on guitar, right, you're going to do a performance later on. You want to loosen up and play some nonsense. You know, I really like when I play by myself, I can play straight lace stuff, you know, very proper. Oh, that sounds like a real song there. But I typically going to play like nonsense. And same thing in the trading thing. So when I posted all these videos about trading, people like, well, this is fucking ridiculous. I go, yeah, no, duh. But imagine you put in, uh, which I would, because this is probably even a Williams Fractal here. This is a, a swing low, they call that. Now, this is eight hours of slightly pullback, eight hours of slight pullback. And then we go ripping up. I can turn the candles on if you want, but it's kind of candles. Okay, here's another thing. Candles are really a, a a dual moving average because you have open and close. We only have close here. So there's actually a crossover where it closes above the open. If you actually plotted the uh, opening prices and closing prices. So candles are, are dramatizing the open. Well, it opened here and it engulfed. Okay, so it engulfed here. So look, it engulfed. I'm going to buy stop here and we're going to go long. That's really good, Johnny. But you know what? Um, why don't you buy down here when it when it double bottomed? Well, because we just don't know if that's going to be a double bottom. I mean, when I hear that stuff, my come unwrapped. I mean, I'm just really. So you're not going to buy. You're not going to buy because it's down. Well, I didn't quite get divergence. You know, I'm looking at, uh, I'm using an RSI here. Dude, you got, you got it. You need help. Like, so, I mean, I'm just going to say, if you put a buy stop on a 1K here, yes, you're only going to lose your mind, not your account. Yeah, you're going to make money too. Um, you got to, this is the British pound, really. So you got the, this is when you run in the 30 pip stop, 40 pip stop, right? When you buy, when it comes down here, you got to put a 20 pip stop on that puppy. You cannot buy here on the British pound. Here's another. In the beauty of the four hour chart is you only get six trades a day. There's only six market order trades a day based on that, those kind of situations. So when this pulls back here, you're going to buy this pullback, you're going to buy this pullback, and you're going to buy this pullback. And obviously this pullback needs a fucking 50 pips stop. For you to make this trade, you got to buy at the market here on that pullback. You're assuming it's going up. And then you buy even more here. So here's, here's what my system or the robot would do, what I'm going to do. So my robot that I'm building... Apparently, supposedly, just have to find somebody that can. Um, well, it's me. I'm just going to do it, right? So I'm just going to look at the market, or instead of the robot, this is better than the robot. Here's here's the answer to that, the workaround. Because robots are bullshit. They're just so clunky, and, whoa, I told it to do this, and, uh-oh, shit, it's buying every fucking... 
Like it's buying all these down things. I don't want it to buy now. Oh my God. Even though these would be great trades, right? Because look at, if, if it starts doing stuff that you're just unauthorized, let me use a different pencil here. Okay. It, you know, he, this is a real prime example. If you got the um, ability to see this low, when the market's here, I'm going to put buy limits in the markets here, and I think it's going to go to here. Look, I think this is the first wave. This is, say, wave one. We don't need to have this perfect shit anymore. I mean, you don't need to have, like, well, this is not pulled back. This didn't do a six, 618. I'm not taking that. No, that's going to see his tank, and it's breaking out to the downside. Can't you see it's in a downtrend? You cannot think like that. Um. It may be in a fucking downtrend. And you may say, well, see, I sold here and look, it's in a downtrend. I made money on the downside. How many videos do you need to watch of people cherry pick a fucking trade based on a, on a harebrained algorithm when the, the big winning trade happens to be the reversal? The lowest trade is to buy here to put limit orders in. So if I buy this pullback here, 20 pips down, I'm going to buy with a 20 pip stop. I get stopped out. But that's okay because you know what? I got buy limits sitting on the tens. Inside of these buy limits, I have scalp outs of 10, 20, 30 pips. If all I wanted to do all day, and this is the this is a guaranteed tr winning trade here because it's based on money. It's not based on one decision that I'm gonna put a buy stop here and think, well, you know, look at this trade here and uh, you didn't cash out? No, I rode it all the way back to here. In fact, I ran a trailing sell stop. Okay, we ran a How many times are you going to do that trade? And how many K are you, you going to pay the rent with this trade? What do you What do you think? I just, okay, this is the thing. You got a million dollar account and I'm a prop trader. You know, dude, I don't, you can't, how can you possibly watch people do this shit? It's impossible, man. It, you cannot... You're just selling people hope, I guess. I, I don't know. It's it's a crime right there. This trade here is so. Do you see how many tickets I got in that? Now that's a. Um, these are the stops, the red, and these are take profits. Now it could have made more money, and I can go to the time frame to see. I don't know. You just, you can't even believe it, man. When you, when you really drill down on what people are saying and shit, it's just fucking retarded. So here, I think it bought at the market. Maybe definitely buys and limits below. So this is buy at the market with a trailing limits that never got filled. Just the very top of that rack. Now I understand that the amount of effort that you need to put into these trades. If you look at the whole, one, this is the one hour chart there's way more trades on here that i would do if i could babysit the market now there's not everybody can do this trade but if you can see that up 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 okay i got sell limits up here already based on the four hour i know there's a supply window here and this is a 20 pip supply window so I'm going to grab my 20 pip stops to make 20, 40, 60, 80. I mean, I make my 80 pips. And this is when you have to admit once they fill you here and you're not going to see your, oh, it's going to come down here. And I'm going to, you're not, you should already think about buying here on a limit, buying here on a limit, because now they're filling this void. The market's constantly filling. Yes. If you do not cash out of that, there is a void that is forming here. They're going to fill that. And when I say they, it's just the pressure of all these people. There are There's so much money on this chart. Now, I didn't do this trade, but I did it on the euro. I sold this. I cashed out. I sold that. I cashed out. I sold new highs and I bought new lows. But then you're going to say, what do you do here? Did you buy all these? Now, um, the reason why you have to be very, very careful buying this, 
because look at the size of this vacuum. Are you, and people say, what vacuums are you talking about? Well, as soon as you go up, you're going to form this vacuum. And the market's going to suck back in. This is the way I think what I think's going on here is you can only go so far. And you've already kind of destroyed this. So it's, it's like a, a stop hunt. It's a vacuum hunt. The market just can't resist probing down here next week. I'm going to put buy limits in here, but I'm going to put a lot of buy limits below here because I can see the fucking price. You just got to have the balls to put all your limits in here and risk blowing them out. Like you just got to have this. You just got to have balls. Now you're going to say to me, I got balls and I did what you said. And uh, let me zoom out and show you where your balls got sheared off. But there's a reason why they got sheared off because you didn't mind the gap. You didn't mind the, the vacuum. It's not those cute over in Toronto, Canada. They have this subway and says, mind the gap. And I thought, Hmm, I mean like pay attention. So just hilarious, you know, how dangerous the vacuum is. And why is it so dangerous? And why is it so, um, why do the trend traders love this move here? The trend traders aren't happy about this stuff. So it's like, you know, Democrats aren't quite happy about voter ID. You mean you got to prove you're a citizen? Wait a second. I thought a human's only, <laughs> if you're a human, you can vote. Oh, oh. Even a dead human? Yes, even a dead human. So, but the market doesn't let you do that shit. And, and now you, you would say, well, bottom tick Bobby, um, bottom pit Bobby, you know, he got in here and he scalped that. He'd done good that day. Now, all the trades that you can see here, there's a difference between the guy that sells here and buys back here because this is uh, the one hour chart. And he says, well, you know, I looked at the weeklies and I've I seen a target down here, you know, and uh, I knew when we took this out, we fucking lights out. And there's this big vacuum. If you look back to the left here, um, but this is the first breach of the vacuum and this kind of uh, void fill theory. It's not really a theory. It's just a way it's a way of uh, pricing the market because the new lows really are going to be super high drama. When you poke through here, I, I, I'm sure if you had limit grids here, one K's, and let's just get down to the real price of this trade. Now you're in a 3K, now you're in a 4K, and you got a 5K limit, a 6K, a 7K, your 8K. You filled a 4K. Okay, just think about that. You filled a 4K, and you've got a, on this I would run a very wide stop of 50k on each 1k so you're risking what is that 20 bucks and you hold that trade until it comes back to your worst entry you could take all those k's off the table and you could have scalped nothing but the uh, auction wick you you have limits sitting on this grid it doesn't matter whether there's a moving average or the atr or what anybody thinks or says you've got buy limits sitting below here 10 pips apart one case okay you just filled your now did you cash out everything here right when you came back to that actually this is the kind of the plunge back to or did you hold and you're kind of hoping they take out this. Uh, this is one day from here to here. This is a daily chart, so to speak, in hourly view. And is that a good trade? Oh, yeah. Now, this is, to me, is an auction. You come down, you take out the, the lows from, and I don't even know how far back that void goes, but, boy, they come in and golf that puppy all the way to here. Even get one more, one more move. Here comes Asia. So we can all do our... We can all have sell limits in the Asian trap too. Let me run through the, uh, so I'm jumping around here, but I, mean, I guess I'm trying to include everybody in the, uh, the first time viewers or the people that say, well, show me how this Forex thing works. Plus I'm trying to <laughs> talk about the, uh, 
you know what what really goes on in Asia there where you have the, okay so here's, here's Asia I'm just going to mark it even though it's, it should be obvious but look how quiet it is here why is it so quiet why is it so quiet um Asia and then just top tick time you did it and then woof here comes London open oh woof. now if you were to start buying this plunge yeah you're going to get hammered on that right because this void is so big and that was you just and that's the one hour chart without dropping down to the five minute chart but it's okay let it happen they stop you out whatever a little dead cat bounce here comes asia again now a lot of people are thinking well surely it's going to retrace now no you know why uh, there's still this poor guy stop we got to go after and i'm just speaking for the guy that's bullish you know the guy that's he's long and um also just there's supply here there's just immense and what's going to happen and the curiosity is that what's going to happen if they ever hit this price well you can kind of get involved in that by just putting a pack of buy limits down here and look at the reaction you get it's just amazing you could also have a whole rack of buy limits here all the way down just imagine you drop them here and they last for a week so you all your trading plans for me all my trades are already spoken for i could say let's put in uh 300k right that's um 10k 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 30k or you know i'm sorry 10k per shelf here so in 30k all the way down big white you're taking a lot of you're taking some punishment there but as they fill these tickets uh here's going to be you have to have built into each one of these if you do not um have it built in there when it comes back off the floor you're like well i'm kind of up you know i'm kind of up um let me scalp out or it's built in to take 10 pips off the table but I'm going to have to tell you, I'm going to buy on uh, this thing. I'm going to buy, and I think I did actually. I did buy this plunge, by the way. And down here, I loaded the wagon. I went all in with this account because at this point, the account's only at 13000 I bought into this plunge here, and I think this is what um, not only stopped me out, but I couldn't trade anymore. So when it came back to here, I think I cashed out. I didn't wait for this kind of thing. Now, when the when this void gets filled, that's kind of game over for that void. You know, you've crushed it, and when it starts to retrace, I'm gonna play the. I'm gonna trade this from both directions with my system. There's no bias. I don't. I'm not looking at this like, well, I gotta find a place to get short on that. Um, now, I would if I was going to do the market orders. There's a sell. I only sell if it's up. And I only buy if it's down. So I did buy this down. I really loaded up. 50 pips stop on that, too. I think here I kind of really heavy 50 pips stop. I think it might stop me out. But here, once again, once they stop me out, I just reloaded as hard as I could on the euro. And, the, and I thought, well that's the obvious scalper exit is to make it back to the floor just like it was here so the counter trend trades are not that um that's why the trend traders are going to say well you should really be selling that it's okay because if i keep my strategy of buy low sell high here i made 150 120 pips if i got stopped out of my one case here and i made a few pips here and a few dead cat pounce dead dead cat bounce pips of 30 high probability woven into my um, trade plans is to make 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pips. So they hit a cluster of tickets here. I'm not, I'm not, um, since I'm cashing out of some of this, I'm, I'm managing that situation, right? Just like here, because I made enough money on a buy only system. In other words, the system is selling that's when it takes profits so there's no i know it sounds like i'm uh, biased but i'm not i'm just tactically biased to get into the long so i can get out with the scalp it doesn't matter what the final destination is if i'm going to buy a cluster fuck here and cash it out buy into this plunge cash out buy this plunge cash out because um 
if I run the sell side of that, it's going to be sell, 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 cash out. There is no difference. And so this is what has taken me to the point of being a unbiased trader and, and taking more advantage of more opportunities that, okay, I see this void here. I'll sell it. I got sell limits here because I know that the, um, the bulls or the people that enter on confirmation, they're going, look at them. It's going up. It's going up. Oh, is it really? I could just as easily. Now here I'm going to get punished, right? Because if I put sell limits every 10 pips in here, it's like, oh man, I mean, they blew me out of 40 pips here and finally I make my money, right? So this is when you martingale in. So people, martingale doesn't work. Well, you're not doing it in a, if you just keep adding to a bad position every fucking hour it's down, that's completely different than laying a martingale grid in that's like already pre-designed to, if I buy a 1K here, I buy a 2K here, I buy a 3K here, you can only imagine that with enough money in the account, and there was enough money in this account, that if I got here and I'm buying a 30K, then I'm buying a 31K, I think you can see how that worked out. Martingale wise, why Martingale cleans up, presupposing you're not going to scalp that bottom ticket off either. You're not going to take that. Are you going to take that 32 K and just take 10 pips? And if you did, um, then it means that when you get to here, you're almost out of a majority of that position. And these, these losers up here, this is a one K a two K. Don't forget. This is one K two, three. You got a lingering eight K up here. You're worried about. So a Martingale, laid out grid is completely different than saying every fucking hour it's down. I'm going to buy and keep doubling my position. No, no, this is maybe a one K add on. And in my system, I wouldn't put a 32 K here. I put a rack of 32 K's in here that have a cluster bomb iceberg to cash out. What if I just put cluster bombs on the, you just have to think tactically because it doesn't matter anything. This void here is as legitimate of a sell window as this void here is a buy window. And I know you're going to tell me, well, you got stopped out of here, but dude, I made it back. And then some, if I put in denser orders down there, just like next week on the British pound, if we breach this buy 1k, 2k, 3k, you're going to martingale into that. So I'm saying, Yes, Martin Gale, into that too. To linear grid trade that, okay, you're going to be okay. You're not going to blow up the account, but you're not going to make any money. If you Martin Gale'd in and you compress, I just, maybe Martin Gale's a bad thing. Let's just call it um, exponentially uh, compounding, head to a loser even more. Let's just call it add to a loser even more. Uh, you you got the one k, the two k, the three, the four. If you put a cluster on the, if you start buying below the round, you're gonna buy a hundred pip window here, and when you get to the bottom of that rack, you're buying pretty heavy at the hundred. See how that works? you may cash out of all your position here and then go and then just take these losers, these small losers off the table and go, you know what? Let's just go flat because we're coming into Asia. And that was an amazing recovery at the end of the day. You cannot think, well, that thing's right. You could think that. So I'm trying to put in context, this is a one period moving average on top this is a one hour chart there's so much money here why are you sitting for waiting for a garley when you could just put in dumb shit trades like well i'm just gonna buy in here this looks like a good place to buy. oh wow look fuck i'm making money i'm gonna do that trade again oh fuck i'm making money i'm gonna do that trade again you should, I, i'll be long right now i'd be long right now on this thing at least a little bit and i got buy limits down here and i'm also going to gauge it and i'm going to look at this thing here come in asia What's going to happen? Can we keep tanking? Fine. That's fine with me because I'll just put buy limits in that walk away. I mean, like, you know what? That's going to be a buy limit thing. I'm just going to let that thing cook. That's going to be a great trade. I, don't have to, I can close the books on that. I could start buying below here 
We saw that we saw them. Okay, there's another thing. London opens. This has nothing to do with moving averages. And I know you can put a moving average on here and tell me all day, well, I sold here because, see, this is a rail, you know, downtrend. Now, I see structure. I mean, I'll, I'll see the fact that since I bought this whole plunge, I'm getting out. I'm cashing out. I'm not putting a new sell on, maybe. I don't have to. I just made all that money. Why is that not enough money for you? If you load up and you start buying a one, a two, a three, and you see this chatterbox accumulation flag pennant, whatever the fuck. This is, what is it, sunny night, right? Sunny night. Another big deal. End of the week. I think I even drew a trend line here in the last video. I was like, yeah, that, that's, that's going to keep going down that trend. Huh? Now, you could have sold limits on the way up. Sell a 1K, sell a 2, sell a 3, sell a 4, sell a 5, sell a 6, sell a 7, sell a 8. You made money on that trade. It's crazy. It doesn't, the trend is created by giant moves. But there's so many moves in the market that are so-called noise that why wouldn't you just trade those from a grid um, standpoint? Uh, because your mind's looking for this big story, this big narrative. Tell me this famous person is, uh, you got to listen to this Britney Spears tape. You'll lose your mind. Uh, but it's true, you know. My parents were like that. You can't go outside and play it tonight. But I'm not stupid. Yeah, it's too late. That's, sorry. It's dark out. You can't find your fucking own hat out there. <laughs> Look at this top tick Tommy up here. Wow. So, see this cell window up here. Wow. I guess that's the order block. I see TB talking about up here. But, man, I'm just thinking next week is just a piece of cake trading this shit. Isn't it? I think it's not if you've got this singularity optimal trade entry idea, I think you're you're just setting yourself up for this big giant search for the holy grail. There is no the holy grail is the market's gonna move up or down. The, the holy grail is that are you if it goes up, would you sell? I'm like, yeah. Now I've gotten burned because on the sell side and it was kind of spooked to sell because most of my stuff is built on buying and then dumping as the sell and making money from that side but to sell so i did it i sold uh this rally on um the euro dollar and you didn't get it here on the pound but on the euro you got this nice um where they come up and they they hit the wick so i'm just really trying to make money uh by trading uh being the wick of a hammer because that wick is my trade on a larger time frame the four hour wick is a nice maybe double bottom on the one hour chart or the half hour chart so if you go the half hour chart you see a pattern and you go well, you know what that's just turns out that that is just a wick on the four hour chart that beautiful 15 minute triple bottom with the divergence and all that stuff is living inside of the wick on a four hour chart yeah it is so that was another thing is i thought well why am i um on the 15 minute chart and biting my nails or chewing my fingers thinking is this going to work out? Like, is this a triple bottom? And if I am on that time frame, actually, I will add at the market my one case. I'll be like, let's build a position here. Every time it dips down, buy one another one. Every time it dips down, buy another. Now, this is a, a different mindset because now you're not doing, you're actually going to build a position while the market's not moving because it's not hitting my limits. If it's not hitting my limits, I'm like, okay. I'm not going to get filled on that limit. The limits are still pending for another four hours. Okay, I'm saying when the Dow Jones opens at 9.30 in the morning, if we're not filling these limits, I'm going to build a position going the other way. And the only last piece of news that came out on Friday was uh, 10 o'clock, the consumer sentiment shift. But these are just, it's really the closing of London at 11 o'clock. And... Um, you know, the markets will make a run for the border. They'll make a run for either fair value or they'll keep going into the vacuum into the very close on Friday. 
you know, or you get a retracement pause. And so we're now coming to next week and it looks like trading is not going to be as, um, well, you know, the, the stock market's climaxed. The Dow Jones has gone up for 11 months and I'm thinking sideways now. A market crash isn't really possible. Um, markets don't turn on a dime. I know people want them to. So there'll, there'll, there'll be, have to be a huge distribution phase now, I would assume. And uh, treading water on Bitcoin, 30,000. Now, Bitcoin's trapped in a range between 60,000 and, and, I suppose, 10 grand. Some somebody asked, well, what what about that gold? What would you what if you have money? What you, what would you do right now with money? And you have to look out into the abyss. The vacuum for me is where the money's at. So if they drive it into new lows, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to wait for them to either hit my limits. And if I see they're not hitting my limits, I'm going like, to have to just come in at the market. You know, I mean, I'm going to have to fucking just as a a dual approach. The market's dropping. They're coming into my limits. I can see, yeah, that's going to be a fucking feeding frenzy. Now, I'm not going to sell into that because in, in, in two hours, they're going to be smashing down when U.S. markets open. So let's just see how much they smash it. And I'm going to even, may even step in front and delete some pendings as I see them smashing it down because I'm like, dude, this is going to be a bloodbath. And you couldn't delete them fast enough, right? Uh, when you double click that close order, it only takes the bottom ticket off your rack. So if you want to do it like that, make sure you're trading an instrument that you're going. Um, short you're going short in that instrument because it'll take off that bottom sell limit so it's really confusing in a way to think about buying selling because if you put sell limits in now you're on a sell thing and now you got to think about well is how far is it going to pull back but that's what i've been doing with the dollar or yen because i'm using the dollar yen and the euro to the dollar as a hedge to soften my profits and soften my losses it softens my profits in a sense but i have the flexibility of taking off a leg and going i just made money on that on that year on that uh, dollar to the yen cash that out that just made 50 pips you know now that's that in my opinion that whole auction is over we've we've made new lows we've come up maybe maybe even engulfed but i'm trading the engulf i'm 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 inside of that trade i'm not waiting for the engulf and then putting a buy stop above that, maybe on the five minute chart or the one minute chart, but no, sorry. I'm, I'm going to step right out there in the market, you know? Uh, but you know, to trade with a hundred pips stop on a million dollar position is still, you know, almost like trading without a stop. Now it depends what you're tra trading, right? If you're trading um, Australian dollar, or something that's something that's pretty quiet that doesn't move a thousand pips in a week. So those ATRs, which are all smoothed out for this no nonsense people, I don't get it. They got fourteen period ATR, dude. Just look at the chart. I mean, really, you're gonna use a you need use a, you need an indicator for that. So I am using my this is my uh, pip grid. This is all about does your trade plan meet the spread requirement? The spread's two and a half on close here. Not too bad. Does, does your trade plan fit? Can you trade with a five pip stop? Okay, you can maybe on that really quiet market just before it explodes, or maybe it's running and you're skimming the market. You could, if your broker's fast enough, that's a Ryan bot was trying to, he wrote some robot that's gonna chase the market with a 10 pip stop or something, or eight pip stop, and just buy, buy, buy as it goes up. Okay, you're really depending on that your servers are great. Your router has been rebooted. You're just ready to go. You know, you, you know, so I guess high, high speed trading, 
But if you have a big limit grid in there and you just got some stupid ass swing account with a bad spread and, you know, you just got like a few K in there as a joke, you're making 500 bucks a month on dumb shit trades, you know, it's completely different than you're trying to make $500 in the morning because the market smashed into your limit grid and retraced, boom, it's boom, bang, you're out. You know? I trade, I'm trading the news though. So, you know, when the news comes out, or when the market plunges into these new lows, be when the Dow opens up, there's a frantic and trade, do that trade, you know. So I tightened up my targets. Um, I put in shallower targets, which once again, that's making it easier to place the extreme orders with the unextreme orders. So if I have a 20 pip stop to make eight pips or a 10 pip stop to make eight pips and a 15 pip pip stop to make six pips and a 10 pip stop to make 20 pips i'm not always going to make this 20 pips with a 10 pip stop the markets don't allow for that so you have to really say this idea of risking one point one and a half percent of your account i could do that you know in, in i could risk so much less than that because I have so much more flexibility, I could say, well, I'm going to risk $4 to make $2. I'm going to risk a dollar to make 50 cents. I'm going to risk, um, uh, say, $3 to make $6. Yeah, that can be in there, but that trade is, or that's going to be 30 pips to make 60 pips in my world, but that's going to be, wow, you know, <laughs> really? Um maybe on Wednesday, uh, maybe on some psycho move. But for the most part, to be constantly making some kind of money, this is the other aspect of trading. Are you, it's over 24 hours. Can you have trades out there that are like, yeah, this looks like a good trade for the next four hours. Um, certainly in Bitcoin, you should be able to, if you're trading at the market with market orders and you're like, you're willing to build a position because I don't see how you could pull the trigger on some enormous uh you're so good at trading that on the five minute chart in bitcoin all day long there's a great trade to make a thousand dollars with a tight stop uh, i don't think so <laughs> this is that's the problem the market doesn't always present opportunities if the market's dead for a person that wants to make money from 100 pips it ain't gonna happen dude so you either gotta go find another market or you stop trading or you back test your robot and all these things but I am back testing. I'm, I just call it rehearsing. I'm going to put up the four hour chart here. I'm just going to run through. Uh, before I get to that, I'm just going to run through some of the current uh, state of affairs of all these instruments and all the wackadoodle stuff that's going on here. All the market manipulation, as I was so speak. <laughs> that's another thing. You know, watch these guys that I respect as far as them understanding politics. When they start talking about the markets and the. Uh, Oh, you know, the, the the hedge funds, this and that. You know, these hedge funds aren't that bright, dude. You got to think about it, man. They're so over leveraged. They're just like fucking ass. You think they're any different than a retail trader? You get down on retail traders. Dude, these big, big boys are fucking morons, man. You look at them. Look at the trades they're doing. So, in the dollar thing, right? What's it with the dollar? You know, it's like, oh, the dollar, they're going to raise interest rates. So, everybody fucking like in a, a big frenzy dumps the euro they dumped this euro they're like and i just kind of blew my mind i thought really but huh i mean so here's the euro trade you can't even see it on here but i put sell limits above the high of the day i, I literally did this and i was like man nah this is gonna be crazy but i'm gonna do it so because on the four hour chart, I did not see another trade. This thing's been doing, I've been making money from this on the four hour chart because once we fell down in this abyss, this is Sunday night on the year, there's been more trades available here from a buy and sell standpoint because I just put in my buy, my sell limits above this Williams fractal is running. Uh, Bill Williams has this fractal system. So when you get five bars and it turns a corner, it marks off the reversal here. I can't believe it, 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 it picked this one off. It's only because you have three bars up, three um, four-hour rooftops, and then 
it sees this and then it puts the fractal in after it sees this other bar but i'm already you know most people are going to sell that at the market it's still dead cat bounce a 10 pip bounce right 10 pip bounce on that and uh once you come down here you can make back all the money that you may have lost uh, buying into this or may have not made because you never sold that that's actually kind of more painful in a way if you're a seller and you didn't sell that, like your system was short here and you only made uh, 20 pips on this move, you're like, damn, I should have extended my targets into the abyss. Yeah, no shit. Um, so that's the four hour Euro Dow. Now there's way more trading on here and there's very tight spreads and this is just a, um, a gold mine. And the, the, the day that you lose because you bought this plunge, now all the money that you made during these phases which is 80% of the market looks like this, just meandering stuff. And this is rare, but this is a cause from this. Right, This abyss is the cause of that smash. And uh, the also there was an abyss forming here. And this is the calm before, this is when things come to a head, uh, just like they did in a way, well, when was the last time we got something like that? I said, well, here's Sunday night, right? Sunday night, then bam, up, right? So here's a Sunday night event. Here's a Sunday night. Sunday night, place, good place to build a sell position or even just trade this nonsense, right? It didn't matter for your targets being only uh, 40 pips. It didn't matter. You were never going to see, if you have your hard, my targets are hard set. They're not really structurally set. They are, they are, I'm watching it, right? Now, if you're going to buy here and you're going to try to make it back to this 100 pip floor, which is the bottom of this abyss, you buy here. It's going to be a long haul, right? Maybe to make, or maybe it zooms up there. But along the way, I'm scalping out. I know my ego and my analysis says, well, let's get it here. Or you're going to be um, the, uh, I still can't believe people sell Gartley patterns. After thinking in terms of, it's just structure and auctions and stuff. It always blows your mind. But yeah, the sure there's sellers here, but are you going to put a sell in here and wait till the end of the world? Well, this will be the first place sellers are going to come. This is the real floor, isn't it? This is the floor that got, this is the most oldest floor that got taken out. This one, forget about it. That's history. This is the only floor that matters now, right? That That's where people are kind of like, well, they're probably... There'll be a big battle here next week. I should be I should make money next week. Because I'm gonna buy limits here and I'm selling limits above here. If I'm always buying new lows and selling new highs, these are great sells. Then I buy new lows again. It's a four hour chart. So a four hour chart is like wow. Um you're waiting for them to tag this. Now you even the, the market's here, and if you didn't sell these new highs, so selling new highs and new lows on the four-hour chart is a gold mine if you've got a 50-pip stop, a 30-pip stop on the euro dollar. We can see here is uh, a 200-pip move almost from, uh, this is one week from here to here, so we come in, we retag this price, we stop hunt the Sunday nighters, Sunday night's taken out. Huge accumulation on the floor. Are we going to hold that cash out? And maybe you're going to hold it here. Or maybe you're going to sell on limits into that, right? See how that works? Sell, sell, sell. When it gets above here, sell more. Then make it all back. You hold that whole position, right? In that basket scenario of building and uh, scaling in and scaling out. What's the other alternative is to go the extreme of the one trick pony entry where you kind of like hope and pray. Oh, I bought here and um, on Sunday night I bought here because it was oversold or I bought on a limit, you know, and I put a stop in here and I'm like, oh, well, I guess there's 5% of my account. Um, oh boy, I got no trades left. Oh, so you got, you got a big gun, did you? Yeah, and I got a big scope, see? So I'm a sniper. And I put all my money in this one trade. Yeah, that was a good idea. You're so good. Man, you're talented. Your journey's amazing. 
Are you going to flip your gender next week? Yeah, well, I'm going to go along. Go sure. Why aren't people more gender fluid? Why aren't they more um, uh, fluid when it comes? Where's the LBG community? Uh, yeah, I'm long and I'm short at the same time. I don't know what I am. Where are those? Where's the woke traders, man? We need some fucking wokeness in this trading shit. I mean, that's the time to go full retard gay. Oh, look at I. I just don't know. I'm multiple sexes. I got multiple. And people freak out. They see my. They go, How do you manage all those tickets? Why do I have to manage them? They've already got their. I know what's going to happen. They got the stops and take profits all built in. Why do I manage this shit? This chaos is a gold mine. Look at this bullshit. Look how many trap traders. Well, Joe put a buy stop here because he said, well, you know, William said buy that new high. We keep buying new highs and keep get blowing the account up. I don't understand. So the four-hour chart is like kind of kind of funny, huh? Sure, you're going to sell up here next week. And, of course, you're going to buy down here. That's my trade system. In a nutshell, I'm going to buy low <laughs> and we'll sell high. Maybe it makes sense now. These are all good buys next week. These are all good sells. I don't discriminate because once we can becomes a sell, once we get filled on the sell side, oh, gee, it came back. We made money. It's crazy. Yeah, because I got a 10 pip target. I got a 15. I got an 8. I got a 16, a 32, a 28, a 48. It's all in there. And in four hours, I can do the same dumbass trade again. So let's do it. Let's, let's go trade this shit on the robot. I keep getting sidetracked here when I'm thinking, and I'm just blurting shit out. But so let me go to the next uh, instrument. Let's take a look at the Bitcoin. So this is the big uh, intrigue was to watch the Bitcoin um, make that new low. We scalped it. I, at least in my mind, I scalped it, right? Look at this beautiful scalp, too. This is Monday's entry on the yield Bitcoin. Let me see if I can go the weekly here so the drama is what's gonna happen when the bitcoin makes a new weekly low oh shit people that was a great scalp so if you were a scalper from this fresh low right high probability trade they would say because it didn't tank into the abyss it didn't keep tanking and taking out and blowing people's minds but i think it's probably about to happen and they're going to say, oh, the Chinaman this and that. But, you know, who doesn't have buy limits on this void? Who doesn't have buy? No, I would say, I'm trying to tell the bass player in the band, he's in crypto. I said, dude, just please put some buy limits out here. <laughs> Walk away. If your broker lets you. Or wait till it comes to 21 and buy. <laughs> People buy Bitcoin at 21. Now, you know. There's a high probability that you can scalp that to the obvious previous support becomes resistance rule of life. If this is support, it's going to become resistance. So if you buy down here, you're going to cash out here. If you buy here, you'll sell here. Now, maybe you don't put on a new sell for a big down lag. Who needs to look at the sell limits you could have had poised on the on the highs of the weekly saw so trailing. This is the stop hunt of the bears here, right? They're short, and then, whoop, they just clipped them out. You could have sold there. You also could have sold because it's up on the weekly. Some, I talked to some guy. He was in the, uh, when I was streaming, and he was a crypto trader, and I thought, man, you know, it's really hard to wait. How many weeks did you wait for that setup? Of, of having them trigger, finally, you're, your trailing sell limit is on the rooftops of that weekly chart. You know, if you if you told somebody that trade plan, they go, well, how, when's that going to happen? But when it does, hopefully you traded really big on that trade. But I don't think people would. They'd be like, no, oh, well, is there a five-minute version of that? Because that setup's going to take forever to form, isn't it? Like, I think once you figure that out, for the impatient trader, once you figure out how long it's going to take for that setup to happen, uh, you're like, mm, I don't know. I don't want to wait that long. And if you sell at the market, here's the cruel thing. You sell at the end of the week, right? And you put a stop here to protect yourself. I don't want to risk too much on that trade there, see? Now, your sell limit guy's already gotten filled on this sell limit and this sell limit. He's short two contracts. He got a sell limit trigger here, and he's got a stop here. He's short. He's like, what's going down? This is the only place. This is the only rally. 
But what happens now in Bitcoin? A total buyer for the scalp. I'm a total buyer for a cash out to here. And then that's it. I don't give a fuck what they do with this Bitcoin. 31,000. So you watch, look at anything that Tim Poole says about Bitcoin. You can see a tr first time trader mentality shit in his pants. Like, oh, I don't care what happens. You don't care. It comes back to 15. Yeah, I know. It comes back to 20 grand. You're going to still say you're up on the trade. But you got to, you got, you can't can't imagine how heartbroken you must be if you bought bitcoin here i bought it back in november he's bragging i don't know why he's talking november of what oh he bought it here so when it comes back to i want to hear tim he bought it here in november i bought it here see so it's gonna go I'll just keep going up so he got in here he didn't cash out here at the end of the year you really can see inside of people, you know, when you see a, a topic that you know about, right? If you know about guitars or whatever it is, um, and you see some, uh, you know, maybe Britney Spears does know about guitars. She sounds pretty intelligent. Britney Spears says, you know, God, Les Paul, is this, the action is a little high, isn't it? Uh, you know, I don't know. But. Yeah, this is this is fascinating stuff, and the fact that the public is in on this Bitcoin has to be the most cutest thing in the world. And that that could be wave three, like you could have a consolidation. But yeah, Bitcoin at a million, hmm, I don't know, it's not looking too good. Hmm. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, I'm I'm not going to worry about that because if I'm trying to make money. I don't care if I'm right or wrong about these long-term calls. There's another thing. These kind of calls you want to make and this, that, and the other thing's going to happen. Same thing with about the dollar. You know, people are just, oh, the dollar, the, the dollar, the dollar. Well, the dollar sprung back pretty fucking heartily. Um, crazy, right? Also, there's um, selling tickets to the show. What's really going on is, I guess if you really want to see what's going on, you just look at the chart. But see, the dollar is really not going anywhere. Yeah, a little bounce here. This is the dollar index. Um, I got a bad, uh, a bad template on here. Let me take off some of these five pip handles. I just don't think we need a five pip handle on that. So I'll just leave the hundred pip. This is one penny. So this is the monthly dollar index. Not really. It's just here's seventy cents. Here it's a buck, buck oh four. You know, a strong dollar. Here's a buck oh four. Who cares? Who cares? You know, did you do you have a car? Did you buy a car that's depreciating? Like all these assets people talk about. It's mind blowing. I don't know. If you're trading money and then you look at people. They're like, oh, I'm buy some gold. And you see these gold commercials. And like, you're making money from selling gold. You're making money from minting it, borrowing it, putting it in a pendant. Um, all the commissions you make selling it. And um, is it making you healthier? Is it making you richer? Are you feeling more secure? That's the. I think it's a feeling. It really comes down to a feeling. I'd rather have my money in a Forex account than in gold because I cannot... This gold idea is so silly to me because it's a feeling thing. It really just comes down to feelings because people would say, well, don't you want something that's um, never going to go to zero? All right. Well, you're afraid. I mean, it just means you're afraid and you're going to die. This is how I brought this up a few times uh, that you saw unless you think Rush Limbaugh is with Elvis at a Burger King, but you know, these people do die. And, uh, when you're alive, you know, you just do what you can. And, uh, the natural state is to be healthy and to be without a mask and to live your life and to take risk. I think it's, in other words, even if you don't, there's going to be maybe a hurricane that's going to challenge your, your view of security. So you have gold bars, but there's a hurricane that just wiped out your house. I guess you could sell your gold bars, right? Or the gold bars survived the hurricane. You didn't. 
And I know it's like, um, so there's the, the price reality. Then there is the, um, the fear, you know, the oil thing too, with the oil pipeline, look, looks like oil's ready to make another run up here. This is on the four hour chart, by the way, that's kind of bullish. You know, I pulled back a little bit, won't stop going up. Um, yeah, it looks like oil's on a major, this is a huge pullback here, but this thing's on a serious, uh, tear, right? Oh, nice. But on the daily, you're like, oh, that's a little, a little uh, long in the tooth on the daily. So perspective. And the weekly is like, oh boy, you're reaching resistance levels. So the four hour chart says buy. On the monthly chart, you're like, okay, but can't we just make like about $3 a barrel and get out, please? Also, you're in the seller's um, abyss, I think. I'm, I'm calling this whole area the seller's window, and especially everything above that. And uh, sure, sure you can buy. And all we need to do is have a lawsuit because they're going to sue um, Biden for this pipeline. Somebody's working on that. There's no way. I'm sorry, dude. If you can get George Floyd statue. <laughs> If you can get a crackhead statue, you can definitely sue, um, you know, or meth, right? We don't want to confuse them. You, that, that's really, you, you got to ask yourself. So that's there's a real overbid here on the crude. And NASDAQ, once again, we're making history here on NASDAQ. There's something terribly wrong with this. There's something terribly wrong with this chart, dude. I'm telling you, there's something terribly wrong. Markets just, okay, I can't say they don't just do that, but look at this run. Look at this pullback. Look at this run. Look at the volatility. This is pretty insane. This is scary, man. Um, I'm, I couldn't wait to put, if I was a NASDAQ trader and those guys are trading NASDAQ, man, I'll tell you what. Those guys that I was doing that uh, streaming with, and they we were trading NASDAQ. I wrote some scripts for NASDAQ, and somebody asked me to write some more. I'm like, I don't It's It takes a lot of mental. When you write a script, you picture the trade as you're writing the numbers in, and then you have to double check it. And then you're like, is this going to be even. The nice thing with the drag and drops is that you can use them in different places, but a hard written double click script is very difficult. It's very custom to write. And. Um, You know, I just put it out there for people to build on top of. They can build on top of it, but I, to write them custom like that, and then uh, there's a feeling of responsibility. You know, if you write, um, say, Mein Kampf, and somebody takes it up as like a way of, as a lifestyle, you know. Think about think about poor Karl Marx, you know, all this Marxist stuff that uh, people are chewing on, thinking, oh, this is the answer. I'm like, that's like, I'd rather see you trade a garlic pattern, but uh, yeah, you want to go Marxism on the chart. That's eh, off topic, right? Um, but look at this. What's going on here with the NASDAQ people? Wow. What the fuck? Here, I'm trying to go to a time frame that I can even get my brain around. Look at the daily chart. So here's another reason why people are getting their ass kicked. When they look at that monthly chart and think, well, there's so many good cells in here. I'm just going to take this auction theory to the dailies. Wow, if you had sell limits up here and you were waiting to get filled on that, you done good, son. Presupposing your targets are down here in the abyss. Of course, here, once again, I'm buying this plunge. And I'll show you my trades on the daily. I'm buying that. No questions asked. I'm going to buy more here. I'm going to buy more here. No fill there. We cash out into the floor. We're out. My next trade plan, buy this abyss cash out to the floor most people did then we got the retest but i would be buying this vacuum so depending on how i'm buying that right i'm buying this vacuum then when it comes to here i'm selling when it comes to here i cash out from a buy only standpoint right look how much money from a buy only i'll sell only too. sell 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 buy back sell 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 
this is probably the best trade on this chart from a standpoint of selling new highs. Last month's high, this is one month from here to here. Wow, did that work out. And right now, I'd be selling this thing. This is these this is unbelievable prices. I'd have sell limits right now. I'd be getting filled on limits. So I'm tagged in there. Look at this. Selling the top tick Tommy here for that nice sweep. Sell that for that. Look at all the counter trend trades. They're just they're just I know you think it's going up, right? The buys are good too. There I don't discriminate. Just don't do it anymore. Don't don't put a moving average on because once you get the moving average out of your head, you'll see, oh, look at this juicy place to put buy limits in. Whoever thunk of that? Buy, buy, buy. Auto scalps. If you get out of the whole fucking trade there and just walk away, you're done for the week, for the month. And look at this juicy vacuum just itching to get filled. You buy more here. There's buy limits. There's so much supply here. Man, I'll tell you what. Those guys that were trading that, I'm telling you, with this move here in the smallest position possible, it costs so much money. That's so much money in one day. So when we were doing those limits, understand I was on the one-hour chart and I'm buying on limits here. and still costing me a minute, right? So the guy kept saying, I mean, so big that, yeah, I know. Like, look at some of this shit. And your sell limit never got filled here. You missed out on that. And just the tiny, you had to trade nano account. You'd have to trade nano account NASDAQ if you're used to trading euro dollar. Because this, these are catastrophically giant. The volatility is so big on this right now. And the public's in on it. You know, the, the idea that it's on the news that GameStop, all these these people that are uh, i guess that's what i'm trying to say is yes we can make money uh the manipulation is how we make money when they drive the price i know people are thinking well they're stop there's they're just they're they're selling it off they're tricking everybody yeah because it goes up and down it just depends which train you're on are you on the four hour train are you on the monthly train how, how deep into this uh Price swings are you? Are you underwater on trades? Yeah, I'm always underwater on the something. The trick is to be up and out on the reversal of the first reversal. You could hold for the whole trend, but if you can scalp this one move here, right? It comes down. You scalp this much of it and hold, right? You scalp the wick and hold. Scalp that wick and hold. Scalp this wick. And maybe you do hold it for this comes back to the middle of the road, the mean deviation, all these things. But what's what? What is the size of tickets placement? What is your kind of like uh, diffusion of price by diversifying and selling all the way up here? Now I'm going to sell. My trade plan coming into is going to put sell limits here, and then I want to do is just <laughs> wait for every hour it's up and sell at the market. With sell limits pending up here. When it comes back to here, I'm going to cash out of the whole position maybe. Well, that's me. My, my monster target is previous support, but it's really previous support here. Previous resistance. There's so much money to be made, and this is the daily chart, by the way, that, wow, waiting to get filled here on some sells to here or get, get filled on buy limits here for some kind of price action that you're going to ride the action. This would have been catastrophic for you had you not thought, well, this is a pretty big, like, you can't see that people are trapped, uh, I guess, for, this is a big deal. And we left all this price behind, and when we get this plunge here, if you got this entry, yeah, you made money, but if you did that wrong, you didn't see nothing. If you did this one wrong, you didn't see this win. So you, your ratio is you risk this much, isn't that the the key your ratio and with multiple tickets you can afford to get stopped out too because if you have tight ratios and of course this is going to be a bummer if you're trying to build a position because you won't be able to do that uh, trade if you uh, buy that plunge 
if we're gonna delete these objects here. There we go. So if you buy this plunge here, um, and this is the critical price zone, is this little notch here. That was worth X to the floor up here. This is such a steep decline and it's so brutal. You have to cash out on something here. You just do, and a lot of people did. At the end of the day, they're like, we're out. Look at this rewick. Now, this is what really blows people's minds. They're like, you mean to tell me this was not the low? We're going to come back on the wick only and revisit that. And I think that's what's astounding is that um, so the biased traders never see that shit coming because they're thinking, well, no, this, that's got to be the bottom. That's got to be the last hurrah. That must be the, the bottom of bottoms in this wick. They consider this to be market manipulation and like a stop hunt against these poor goobers that put their, they bought here and then they put a trailing stop in and they got stopped out and they only made this much money on the trade, right? They didn't see that there was rooftops here. There was a supply zone up here itching to get filled for this trade, right? And people go, well, that's the trend of this trend. Well, which trend are you trading? This trend or this trend? <laughs> You got to throw the trend thing out. I, I had to throw it out. You can keep it. Uh, because the money's not made there. There's so much money to be made on these little subtle, th uh, maybe they're not subtle, this stuff here, right? Is there any supply stacking up here? Should you have buy limits in here? Now, maybe here's a little bit too risky for you. Not if your target's here. If you bought this limit, this one, this one, this one, and no fill on this one, and I'm assuming you put in just limits galore. Actually, you would have put a limit here for this wick. You already made money on this one. They're going to come back and retap that. It's unbelievable. They're going to do it. You bought here. They came here. You have a stop here. You put a trailing stop in. Think about how stupid. Do you have to back test this? I'll back test it for you right now. I'll do a walkthrough. You put a buy here. Here, goober, goober trading, confirmation entry trading. Buy stop, cancel, replace, buy stop, buy stop. Oh, got filled. I know what I'll do. As soon as it comes up, I'll start running a trailing stop to maybe go the other way or to protect my position. Oh, I made this much money. Oh boy, what am I doing wrong? Huh, okay, well, I'll do it again. Buy stop. Oh, confirmed I'm making money. Let me put a trailing sell stop in. Oh, I only made that much money. It's okay, because I'm, you know, break even. I'm not losing, I'm not losing. Huh? Come on, man. <laughs> really? The argument for that trade is, there is pressure building up here. Buy stop, buy stop. Buy stop, buy stop. Oh, got Phil. Put a trailing stop in. Okay, I made that much money. You done good, son. What if you flip it? And a lot of people will say this. My robot's losing money. Can I just invert the rules? Yeah, I suppose if your targets make sense. Price-wise, according to the terrain you're in. But yeah, the, 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 you, it's going up. Okay, well, put a, put a buy limit in. Okay, just got filled. Put a buy limit in, just got filled. Right. Let's, let's drill down to the daily. So, oh, here's a, here's a nice, so you, you, the market's going up. I'll just put a buy limit in. New lows, buy. Bought new lows. Kind of bought new lows. Um, buying new lows, definitely bought that. It's an uptrend, right? Now, here's your first buy limit fill. It's you think it's going up? Put a trailing buy limit in. Why do you have a why do you have a why are you gonna pluck off the goobers? Um, money management stops is what you're gonna do. So you're gonna go against what you've been taught. I suppose retail that your trailing sells your trailing stop. To protect your long position, well, it's just it did it did protect you here. Like if you went long here, if you're long on buy stops here and you're long, long, long. Now, 
If you don't do a strict trailing stop right to the exact thing, then your stop's going to be out here somewhere. But then you're risking more because once it, once they tag it, why don't you take profits here? Oh, well, because I had confirmation. You know, let them stop me out. It's okay. This is a passive way of trading. You're not act. You're not really taking the um, bull by the horns or whatever you call it, the uh, dick by the balls. You're not. You're not really taking it. You know. You're not really. You're not digging in. And you're like, oh, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay with the passive entry. I got my sell stop here, and yeah, okay, sell stop. Good trade, right? I put my protection in, and they finally stopped me out here, and I made this much money. What are you talking about? It's just not good enough. Well, I dropped down on the four-hour chart. You know, it's daily chart. It's just my reference for the trend. I'm short right now. I guarantee you I'm short right here at the market on the NASDAQ. Sold at the market. Got filled on sell limits. I've been short this whole time. In fact, I scalped that. I scalped that, and I'm short. And I'll wait for a rally to sell. Uh, maybe on the four-hour chart, I would do that. I'll go to the four-hour chart. But that, I'm already on that time frame. I don't really trade this fucking thing. But I'm short, you know. And uh, buy limits here, right? The market's already telling me where to put my buy limits in. Why wouldn't you buy down here for this move? Why wouldn't you buy for this move? Why wouldn't you? Well, I got an algorithm and I got moving averages. And you should see my Gartley patterns. Okay, well, that's what's, that's what's keeping you from trading. All the analysis, paralysis, that's what keeps you from trading. You can't overcomplicate it, but you can because you got computers to help you make it so complicated. It's, it's so, so complicated. That's why uh, they wrote that song. Why'd you have to make everything so complicated? And what do we all got? The crudos uh, climax, the Dow's. Um, so the Dow is beginning the possibility of the shoulder on the weekly. And this kind of tells you, uh, hmm, it looks like we're having a little bit of a distribution situation here on the Dow. We're not having that on the, um, so we are on the weekly, you know. So that could be really a big, uh, a big problem. This is Corona down here. And this is kind of overreaction to Corona, really. Order and balance, in my opinion. Um... The DAX, just a huge, um, extremely overbought. Just put a fork in it. We're done. A four-hour Bitcoin. So here was that uh, Monday's trade. That new low. You in golf. Um, good trade, right? And another another big excitement there. Uh, that Monday morning uh, slam down. So that, no, that was uh, Wednesday or, or Tuesday or something. No, 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 this Monday because I forgot that they actually trade this thing. So I don't know what this is here. This is Friday, right? So that Monday is kind of distorted here because we have uh, a 24 hour market. I was pretty sure it was Monday, but yeah, we're sitting on that abyss. This will be interesting. So we have this thing pending uh, doom, looming, looming vacuum. But yeah, the, the, I just feel so free um, uh, the, not to have to, it took me a while. I'm not saying it wasn't that easy to get rid of that moving average shit in your head. Here's the other trade I took was to sell the new highs here. And this is another kind of, took some patience and all that kind of stuff. But I sold above there, man. And I'll tell you what, uh, that was a... a a brutal fill and then here's where I did it again I go you know what this is the four-hour chart I go you know what we're selling up into this thing this is ridiculous when you looked at this chart and at this point you could have drawn, drawn trend lines and all that bullshit up and up and up I'm like no nah, no so I sold this and I cashed out and I sold again and I cashed out so I did those two trades, pure on lim pure limit. Uh, they had to relay the track, right? Because once we filled this, um, all those sell limits, we cashed out. 
Had to replace more, sell them it to do it again. And then cash out. Then a little bit of a sell, cashed out definitely, but I, then I bought here. So this is, the news is going to come out on the, whatever, it didn't matter. This is 9.30 in the morning, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to buy this whole zone here. And I did that trade, and then it was made 30 pips, and I got out. So I did the same trade on the euro dollar as the euro's, as that's going that way, the euro's going the other way. So those guys did sync up there. What is the other? I got the fucking uh, euro dollar here. So you got to zoom in, zoom in to make it a fair um, comparison here. So that was a blistering. Then there was another kind of little white knuckle there, but uh, because I was betting two things at the same time, and I bet uh, that we were going to sell here, so I put. I actually started selling this, so I was already short into it, and I thought, well, this is really, you're really uh, taking a risk. <laughs> but that's what trading is. Sell, 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 and then sell a ton above there. And right as they're coming out with the news, and we're probing this, and I thought, really going to break up here? Well, you know what? I had more sell limits up there. Prepared to sell even more. That thing comes ripping back to here, and then I bought, just the end of the day, I bought this little dead cat bounce at 10 pips at the end of the day, because I, you know what, we're all the way back to the starting gate. What is the final destination of this currency? Don't know, don't care. I'll be buying here on limits, and I'll probably be selling. And once again, on the way here, I'd sell 1K, 2K, 3K, and just sell more and more and more, and just sell a ton here. And the cash out's here. If I buy here, it's just, you know, maybe 50 pips. So to make 100 pips in the market, you can see how rare it is that the market's going to drop this blistering amount. And that presupposes that you sold here with um, a 20 to 30 pip t uh, stop with a 100 pip target. Great trade. How often does that trade happen? Like that? Rarely, rarely on that uh, time frame. So let me just blow through the robot on the four hour chart. Um... So we're going to open up our strategy tester. And I'm going to do it just for the euro dollar because um, it doesn't matter. What, somewhere in time, my stuff's kind of designed for that amount of target. I'm never going to have a 400 pip target because I'm not trading these other instruments. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait six days to get paid. Just not. The, because I want to be flat at the end of the day. I want to take... You know, profits, the spread's going to get nasty at 5 p.m. on some brokers, and I'm just going to get out. Um, sit back and wait for the limits to fill because it's a nice uh, luxury uh, standpoint is to have, to not be in the market, to be in the unisex character. And then you pick a sex later on. See, in fact, all kids should be until the age of 10. You don't have a sex. So we just duct tape your, uh, anything from the waist down, we just duct tape you. And then eh, we'll see it. When you're 10, you fill out some papers and you have play with various colored dolls and then uh, see what happens, you know. Kind of a litmus test. To, you know. I'll just run the MACD robot that gloriously built by MT4. We just need to pick um, the four-hour chart, and I'm going to go with the two-pip spread, and I'm going to say, give me every tick, and... Uh, we're going to just go with that same time frame I traded last time, I guess. We, the the, the four-hour chart's going to be different. And then I'm going to throw my template on, which is just based on prices. Let's hope there's a... Um, 10 pip grid with 100 pip big handles. It's only showing the, the 10 pip grid looks like, though. Now I'll take the speed up to super fast. So this will be a crash course uh, rehearsal. And I'm just going to start uh, trading it, you know. Okay, i got buy limits pending here. Mm, I think that's 10 pip grid. That could be 100, wait. Um, No, that's got to be 10. I can't see the spread. 
Spread says zero. Hmm, that's not right. Okay, so we got our limits down here. And on the south side, I'm going to put a crop in with targets of 10 pips up here. That's my cell window. I wish I'd play back faster, but that's all right. Also, because it's the four-hour chart, I can see my trades here on the, uh, that I'm going to drop that lasts for maybe an hour and stuff. Okay, it's Sunday night. Here we're coming into, now the day is starting. Here comes Monday. We should see some drama. I've definitely got a rack of buy limits here for the next 30 pips. And uh, getting filled, right? Getting filled. That robot's selling into that hard. Hmm? Um, okay, so I just got filled in the stop hunt of Sunny Night. And I'm about to make my 10 pips. Okay, maybe 20. And maybe I'm flat, but I know I'm going to start selling here now. And I'm going to sell more here. That's it. I mean, this is my trade plan. Now we just kind of sit back and wait. We've cashed out of something there. We sculpted a little bit. Now we're going to do it all over again. We're going to rinse and repeat that whole trade. And this is the heart. This is the heartbreaker. I'm sorry. That's 100 pips. So that, that is the 10 pip right here. So let's zoom in. Didn't matter. But you see, okay, I'm buying every. So here I made. I made these pips, right? I bought that plunge. I got to there. We cashed out. Now I'm going to do the same trade. And this is the thing I cash. I can turn on a buy limit bot. I, I, that's one thing I do have built is the buy limit bot. And it just comes in and does the same trade over and over again. Here's where you just got the great deep discount of buying a 10 pip window to make how many pips? 40 pips with a 10 pip stop. Uh, pretty good, right? Now I got, they're filling my buy limits. So we're going to cash. No, I'm going to fill buy this whole plunge here. So it's nice to watch on the four hour. Um, we just made 10 pips on something there. Let's hope. And we're about to cash out. Now I can take the whole position off here. Depending on how big, big it filled. This is basically depending on how many tickets. Okay. We could go flat on the whole position right there. We just made a clean 30 pips. Did we not? That that's my trade, dude. I I don't have this trend shit in my head. It doesn't it don't need it. Buying again. Buying again. Now here I put in my tickets starting here because I realized that uh oh, this is gonna be let's buy here because the breakout traders broke that out and I just made more money. <laughs> See how that works? That's my trade system, dude. That's it. I forward testing it. There you go. Okay, now this granted that could plunge like psychotic amounts. And what's the expiration time on these tickets? This is a four hour chart. Let's look at the big picture. Now am I holding that? I could be still holding some of that. And I could have a big picture of this. Oh, let's wait till it makes it up to right into this vacuum. Yes. We would have sold that. We would have made twenty pips coming back. You see that? We just sold that vacuum. We just made fucking th how much? What do you, how much time do you mind? I, the poor girl, this poor um, what's her name? The mindful girl. My God, can't you see how easy trading is from this standpoint? We just bought that plunge. That was Sunday night plunge. We just bought that, dude. We just made fucking 10, 20 pips, thirty pips. What's so hard about trading? We're gonna sell if it goes up here. We sell high, we buy low. I just went short. I just made 20 pips. Can't see that trade? You need ICT for this shit? Dude, you just made 40 pips with a 10 pip stop. Well, there's, there's order blocks up there. <laughs> oh my fucking God, dude. I shouldn't swear, but you know what? I can't fucking take it. You need ICT for this? Now, I didn't get filled on my, I did get filled on buy limits here in my system because I just, I keep on refreshing with the buy limits and the sell limits and some of them don't work out for sure, right? Okay, so it's getting sideways here. Now, it's getting a little scary from 
the sell window and the buy window from the system I'm talking about right now. Because if we take this out, look out. You want buy limits down here. You could have bought this one, but the problem with this buying this one is be careful. This is a big void. Now you did make money on that one. You scalped that. I'm scalping right now. I'm getting out. Not the whole position. Maybe I got some lingering trades here, right? But look out because this is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And maybe you don't realize that it's happening around you. This is this is an enormous liability for the bulls. If they ever come down to here, you want to be a big ass buyer. And uh, you could step away from this trade. You know, by maybe by Wednesday, we'd be down here and you'd be holy shit. You got so much dry powder. You made so much money by them. You can see these guys. Nice trade there. If you could, you wow, you made 40, 50 pips there. Now, the other looming um, danger is this void up here. But I got sell limits up there. Trust me. In fact, if we zoom in, we can see that from a day trader standpoint, you're already short because of this. Don't be afraid of the vacuum. Only 20% of the time are they going to rip that vacuum so fucking hard to blow your mind. You could have sold that. And, or, you, or you bought on this pullback. And now I haven't even talked about the market order. So it's down for eight hours. You're buying, right? It's, it's probably going up. You got a trend line. You, you're using a trusty trend line. Eh? I'll buy if it pulls back. This is a 618 pullback. This is a 3.2. Oh, yeah, whatever. Whatever fucking harebrained reason. But dude, I just sold on limits here. And I just made fucking 40 pips in four hours while you were dicking with your Gartley. I sell limits up here. And what did I say about this? Be careful. This abyss. Now we just got filled on that, but I'm thinking, no, we're going down into that puppy. This is scary, right? This is the scary time to trade. Oh, accumulation. Of, oh, oh, scalp made my 20 pips. Great. Made my 20 pips. I don't think they're done smashing this puppy though. This is this void is too looming, dude. You've got to be. Oh, there we go. Big fill. And if you sold this, this is why it's so subtle. If your sell limits are on the rooftop of that four hour, did you just not make how much? You made 40 pips with a 10 pip stop? Show me that trade again. Hey, it's on the four hour chart. Now, I know there's a moving average inside of all this bullshit you're looking at. I'm getting long right here on limits. I know my trade. Buy, 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 buy. I'm Martin Galling in. I'm buying more. And at the end of four hours, guess what I'm going to do? Buy at the market. That's right, people. I buy low, sell high. I, I trade the auction. I trade the vacuum. Yeah. No, it really does exist. It's not a conspiracy. Oh, shit. I just blew up the fucking robot. Um, See that? See how many pips I just made? Boom, I'm out. Now I sit back and put buy limits in again. Or am I holding for the big retrace? Did your, did your system let you make 150 pips with a 30 pip stop? 100 pips with a 30 pip stop? Why is this system so crude and so robust? Because of our pips. Look at that cell window there. Look, they retapped the cell window. Top tick Tommy got his ass kicked. Why aren't you taking these trades? This is how you trade the four hour chart. In my opinion, you ain't waiting for a breakout in the four-hour chart. You know, trailing buy stop. Trailing buy confirmation on the four-hour? Why? Oh, they're getting, I'm getting filled big time here. Big time fill. Did I just fucking sit back and watch this money come in? Presupposing I can't have the patience to sit back. Now, that is the trick. You got your buy limit strategy down here. You're like, dude, we're buying this fucking thing. You were up 80 pips on that. And you rinse and repeated it. Now what's the sell? Sell limits up here. Duh. Why? There's a void up above that wick. Why did you just sell that last four hour new high? So I can make, um, how many pips did I just make? Hello? 
put a sell limit here. I don't know if people can see these trades. They're not, just not thinking like this. I don't know. I sold here and I just made how many pips? 40 pips. But I got to get out, right? I got to get out. Look at the Sunday night drama. Look at Friday drama. Sell galore here. Buy limits down here. In fact, I probably just sold. I, I, I guarantee you I'm selling right there into that. And we scalp out. And we go for maybe a target here. Buy limits here now. Just got sold, sold another top tick Tommy. Another 30 pips. Oh, it's so hard to trade. Just got filled on buy limits down here. Oh, I can't take all the money. I, 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 I'm tired of winning. Why am I tired? Because I don't, I'm not trading one standard lot on any of these fucking trades like an idiot. I just can't, I can't stand to watch these people try to trade the market. Look, I was selling on limits there. Dude, I could have bought this trap below the four hour. This is four hour bars. Winning again. Selling that. Oh God, just made fucking 50 pips. Boo hoo. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I, what I'm doing is I, I'm whip sawing the, the um, confirmation traders. I'm beating the shit out of a so called retail guy that has a buy stop here, a sell stop here. He's getting whip sawed and I'm laughing. Oh, you put a buy stop here? <laughs> really? You're going to buy? Yeah, it went up. My moving average, my indicators caught up. I went long. <laughs> you did? <laughs> I got buy limits down here. They're like, well, why would you just, you don't have a Gartley pattern. Don't need one. Got sell limits up here. Don't need no Gartley pattern. Don't need it. Just sold here. Just made 20 pips, 30 pips. Now it is getting dicey because as more sideways we go here, I, you just got you just got to die, man. You're gonna die. You got to die. How easy it is. Why are you working so hard? Why with the moving in the draw the Gartleys and the moving they got that back tested? The, why? Why don't you just make money from price action? Why are you working so hard? Well, I guess it's hard work. You got to put the limits in, cash them out. Buy, sell. You got to buy and sell. You do have to do that part. <laughs> yeah. But look at that. Look at the fill here. Are you serious? Look at that. Oh, my God. They just they just, just stop on it all, these goobers. Oh, boy. Oh, it's so hard. And I sold into that. And I just made 30 off the top. And this is probably up. And I got sell limits up here. Ooh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm just going to, I'm going to cash out here. Buy limits in here now. Oh, just sold more right there. Just sold more. Oof, white knuckle sell. I got tons of cells up here. Just, you can't even believe. Oof. Oh, they're crushing me. I'm sell, 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 sell. I, I got to zoom out. So what I was saying about earlier is the vacuum. And now I'm cashed out, right? So I martingaled in. And people were shitting their pants. Guess what? I sold five standard lots up there. And now I'm making the money. See how that works? I hope this works for you. Put up the four-hour chart and play it back and fucking trade it. Just get used to trading what's going on. There's no moving average that's going to make more money than I just made right there. I sold into that people. You can't look at you getting clobbered on that trade. Am I really? Am I really getting clobbered if I sold a standard lot up there at the tippy top? Auction theory. Oh, there's no such thing as auction theory. Yeah, I know. And the election's not rigged. <laughs> of course. I know. You want to live in a fantasy world of fucking Gartleys and bullshit and trends. Look at that fucker. 120 pips off the tippy top of that. And you and this and you were buying up here? You're all bullish? Because you were looking at that five minute chart. Look, it's going up, honey. And what did I say when we were up here? If I'm not short. Sure, I got the buy limits here. Buy, 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 buy. Just made all that. And I got buy limits down here galore again. Even the sell limits. Dude, you got to be kidding me. It's a piece of cake. You're not going to buy this plunge area? Why? Well, I don't have confirmation that that's a good price. Even better. Nobody knows about it. It's a secret. 
You can see I'm about to cash out, right? Back to the floor. Oh. Boom, we're out. Along with a bunch of other people, apparently. You saw that. You see that tag there. I'm playing back every tick. So, how can I make money from that? Because I, can, I have the ability to throw the limits in here, sell this whole vacuum, which I said was this kind of scary vacuum. So is this one. This one's filling up now. It's filling, it's filling, it's filling. And they're going to fill up more buy limits. I just bought more down here. I just cashed out. So why am I so pissed? Because I just, I can't take it anymore. I can't take watching people do, look at that beautiful buy. Why would you deny that, that, that good price down here? What's wrong with you? Look, you just made how many pips with a, what? Yeah, look at that thing. Coming after this fucking vacuum now. You got sell limits here. Once again, you kind of come back with the other side. The boom. Now buy limits. Now buy limits, right? If it's up, you got buy limits below. If it's down, you got sell limits above. And this is the other one I didn't talk about. And this is the one that makes it even more better. Is that these sell limits have an X time expiration. If they don't get filled with them, look at how many pips you just made from that. Every wick is a new fucking, it's just beautiful. Like every, every city's a border town. You know, you, look at all that stuff. Look at all that money. God damn. Can't you just wait for the markets to open tomorrow? Be like, dude, I was fucking putting violent grid in there. Yes. You could oversize that trade. I'm talking about one case on the tens. This is so light trading. You would never get this account to where I'm at right now. So this account's been in 24 grand from five grand at the market trading so when i see this dive in here i'm pulling the trigger and some of these are sloppy entries with my market order with a 55th stop and i do have that ticket on the platform i buy here like an ass clown yeah i should probably have a 200 pip target right because it went up 200 pips when we bought this trap under the floor and look at this beautiful sell limit here dude you didn't have to be there for that trade why do you think you had to be there for that trade look you just made 30 pips off of that top wick and these guys bragging that they took the ict course it's just fucking hysterical i said yeah i'm showing you stuff nobody will show you i must be doing that too how to make 40 pips with a 10 pip stop you just saw that trade, right? You just not see this trade. You can't see that trade. Selling here. How many pips is this? Selling again, new highs. How many pips is that? Are you ready to become a reversal trader? Oh, no. No nonsense says reversal trading is how they, they trick you. They'll let you make a few pips, but then, oh, gosh. Really? I just made 80 pips up here selling, and I'm going to make how many pips buying down here? Buy, 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 buy. Ooh, just bought. I'm buying all the way down here. Oh, no, I just, oh, Mr. Bill, I just made 30 pips. Oh, no, I'm making money again. Oh, it hurts. Going to buy again, rinse and repeat that same dumb shit trade of buy low, sell high. Oh, I can't believe it's so, you, you just, you it's just so hard. Now it is hard because this is a four hour chart, which means this is 12 hours of bullshit. When you come below this floor here, right? Notice I don't have to wait for my indicators to catch up this whole time. Think of all the beauty of this. Is this not the best way to trade you've ever fucking said? I, I, somebody said to me, um, in the comments, they go, if you, you know, there's this app you can get to people can watch your channel. Dude, I can't let anybody see what I'm doing here. Why do you think I don't promote it? Um, look at that. Wow. Now, would you have sold this window? This is where you have to be very aware of. Yes, I would. Uh, but above this wick, no. Because I can see, based on what I know, if I sell above that, um, wow, this is Sunday night. Uh, I might sell above this and I might sell above this wick and sell above this and sell above that. But look at it. Sell above this. Look out. This. You have to be psychologically prepared for all of this punishment. It's not until now that you're actually making money. 
when you it, you'll shit your pants if you have cell limits in that in that abyss there you'd be like holy shit is that thing ever going up right so psychologically it is difficult if you're watching these hot dogs being made you're never gonna eat them i guarantee you you're gonna you're just gonna ralph you're never gonna eat them um I just try to do something fancy here it didn't work out um okay selling above this wick now here's where a top becomes a bottom in time and uh, i haven't mentioned many market orders here but this would be the chance to get on a long train but it doesn't matter because just trying to make pips see and since i sold up here in a 20 pip window and i just made 40 pips we could conceivably keep crashing here right this is where we don't know is it going to go up or down from here it could come back in here before it goes up if i didn't take my 30 pips that's why i always have my 10 20 40 pips target set and somebody asked in the uh, another comment was well how do you margin you just i just do it i you, you can't worry about that minutia you really don't um now, see, if you sold this new high here, this is a 60 pip winner. Is This is only a 40 pip winner. You don't know. Since I'm doing so many trading, it doesn't matter. This just doesn't. It, it's like asking about that fat lady in aisle five. Do you think she's happy with her purchase? I don't give a fuck. So if you sold up here and you made just made 100 pips, because every time it went up, you sold, you made your 30. Then you made, you're like, holy shit. Every time they keep notching. Don't forget, you got sell limits pending here that never filled. Now... You're buying this, you know, if you're not long, you're buying this, you're buying this. And you got buy limits all the way to Memphis. Here is Sunday night. Now, I'm buying that. I guarantee you I bought that, especially because it's a Sunday night stop hunt. We've seen that a million times or just new laws, you know. So I'm, I'm making money from these trades, right? Now, depending whether these are standard lot, uh, in other words, these could be 50Ks, 80Ks, 40Ks. But if I can build a big position here of 300K, when it gets to here, which is the floor structurally, I'm out. I'm cashing out right now because I know that the sellers that sell the other side of this trade, that they are they're going short on this price this price this price sell 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 they're currently short and they're going to get shorter if they go up there that they're waiting for this moment in time this is probably the end of the day come back they're cashing out right and if i'm not long i might have buy limits pending here so i'm trying to catch as catch can per instrument now they're filling my buys or i'm cashing out on my cells that i put in here with all the balls that i can muster and in 10 pip increments right so 10 pip grids every 10 pips you're buying or selling now we're selling like crazy into this right and we just made 30 see see how that works so i'm just going to call it out i'm not going to draw anymore i think you get what i'm saying <laughs> i always feel like i have to go above and beyond and people, I don't understand what you're talking about this vacuum. So that's why I'm marking it off, right? Here's the here's the sell window you just made. Um, if you sold that whole window for that, some of these tickets made actually 50 pips. Now we do the same trade again. Sell that very top tick, Tommy. We're going to buy down here. So conservatively trading, we buy limits don't start until really deep. And sell limits don't start until really deep. That's conservative trading. If you reserved all your cells for this and you're able to make that trade that is the fucking trade you're not looking for some giant target here or some sweeping glorious trend move now i'm selling into that i'm sure you can see based on my system oops wait, i gotta zoom out because i can't see the i got i gotta see the big picture here in a way because this is going to matter here this price is going to be uh it's written in stone we all know this uh what have we done so far and why why are we seeing these reactions what this is the big sell window right that is where you want to be selling right now so you had to mark that off in advance so we're getting crushed here it seems like right we can't believe we're shorting into this and i'm like damn dude this is like i am underwater like 30 pips and oh i'm making it back i'm making it back so 
if we scalp off the tippy top of that, so it's psychologically demanding, right? Because you sold into that, and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, I can't believe it. Oof. But you made your 40 pips off the top, and now you made your 50. Right now you're thinking, oh, I like this. It's it's definitely a white knuckler. But that's the beauty of the, the pending as opposed to, like I said, I'm not calling out any market orders here. Like the market come into my voids, which to me is more, uh, it's less emotional. Even though there is emotion watching your cell limits get filled, you're like, Jesus Christ, really? And you're going to have to scalp out. You're going to have to become a buyer here. Because this this top became a bottom here, you you got to take that money because you maybe you don't, but if you're in a big position, you better take it, right? If you built a, you got in over your head here, which is you know the camel hair is straight. You 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 better scalp. You better go to the border a little bit. You know, better sneak in the border. Now you're selling. It's sunny night, and you're gonna. I got sell limits in here for the next forty pips. I guarantee you, that's my system. This is euro dollar, so I know I do. But in, in, interwoven in there, I have 10 pip targets. I got even five. I got 16. I got 32. I'm not trying to make the whole sweeping. That's another thing. Is Are you trying to go? Are you going for this trade here? So if you're going to sell into this thing and you're going to cash out all the way deep again. That's for our chart. I don't have to. I could probably make all these pips here. Eh, it kind of drifts down. I'm almost more compelled to start putting the buy limits in here. Wait for this lazy fill. Here are two buy limits down here now, right? And I'm still holding that short. And if I waited long enough, I did make those pips. Now sell limits here, buy limits here. It's playing back as fast as it can. I feel like Britney Spears is doing that uh, leaked uh, interview now to the judge and hurry up and talk um and the court reporter he, she says uh can you slow it down for the court reporter so she she doesn't slow it down <laughs> it fucking just rips okay we're getting filled on those settlement banks we're about to cash out to the breakout point here and uh hopefully we, we that's why i have those uh unbelievable eight pip targets in there because we got we got to secure our we got to maintain our equity here at the tippity top. And I sold that new high. Did you catch that? We just made a new high. I sold that new high. It's just a real white knuckler here. I'm selling again. It's unbelievable. I'm selling this whole week. So here's where you really have to have more than one instrument running. Because if you can't afford this sell, building this huge sell position here, I know you're going against everybody on the planet here. Here's Wednesday, probably right around Wednesday now. And I, as I say, hopefully you're taking your 10, 20, 30 pips off the table here because you would have needed them there. Now you're selling even more. And once again, you're selling even more. Pretty tough. Pretty tough for people to do, I would say. But if you have your limits laid in there, um, it's not that hard. Okay, so you just made 50 pips off the top of that, and you had to take those 50. And hopefully you did, because you're selling more now. <laughs> it's so hard. I mean, to be being stubborn helps. So I'm selling more here, and I'm selling more. I don't know where this is on the on the time frame, but you're getting killed here. Don't forget, you're getting killed here on some level. I, I should look to the left because I'm sure we're coming up. And I did mark that structure off. That was the tippy top. Let me zoom out. So, like I said, 80% of the time, it's ranging. Now it's so-called trending. Okay, this is a. Above here is a 250 pip window of, I would sell, I'm selling to that, don't forget. Here, here's where you get paid. Now, this is why it doesn't work for people because the, here's the, the distortion is that you sell into that thinking, oh yeah, sell, 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 that's right. But if you don't scalp some of these 30 pip pullbacks, you'll never, um, unless you wait until your big tickets really start up here. Now you're almost up 100 pips off the very t tippy top of that. And those people don't like to, they don't like to lose money. 
any kind of money in any kind of way that they haven't lost it uh, previously. It's the rate of losing and the rate of winning that's disturbing them. You sold above this thing, sell, 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 sell. If you really laid into this tippy top, wow, that's a, you made it all back, especially if you martingaled into that. Maybe you're selling big up here. Now you're holding and you're waiting for maybe a possible crush here and the volatility is picked up. And if you're not in the market at this point, you don't have to. The nice thing about being in the uh, the unisex crowd, you don't have to pick a gender yet. <laughs> Uh, gender neutral please yeah. i mean if because if you're ugly maybe you want to be a guy see see how that works um so now the the buy limit the sunny night now imagine you're not in the make you're just coming this part of the picture you buy here and you make your you make your 20 40 pips which is typical for your system but now um if you're still holding this short, yeah, your target's down here now. You know, you're like, dude, and now I'm buying down here. So if I'm not in the market and I see this volatility is pretty brutal, I'm buying this window for all of these. Don't forget, I'm making money in two and five hour, two and four hour, six hour windows. The fact that this thing went like this is doesn't matter to my system. I could have easily, and I did, scalp shorts on that whole thing. And uh, when I get out, I'm kind of going along, right? And now I'm selling this window again. Um, this was a nice uh, trend traders went, uh, entry, right? If you're a trend trader, because you're like, look, I bought that pullback. And look, look how many pips I made. That's your uh, view of it. But I bought that too, right? Because I bought that because I buy new lows. The trend was not consequential to me. I bought that and I scalped the floor and maybe a little engulf. And then I sold here. Got tons of sell limits above here for the next 100 pips. And this is an easier trade to me because I'm like, well, we're really getting long in the tooth here. It's time to really start selling even more, uh, which is tough uh, psychologically because, well, I just got burned on that last. I know, but you got to sell heavy here. Now you just made 40 pips. And now here's where you're going to see the, the, the nice juicing. We scalp out to here. We know there's things. We're going to sell again. We made 50 pips, and I'm just going to lay track in there. Now, I'm going to have to put in my orders wider, and I am going to compensate for the fact that it's heated up, and I'm going to put some of it's way high that maybe never fill. But I'm just trying to make money in 8 hours and 12-hour chunks. I don't care about the big picture. It doesn't matter to me. Because I just sold this new high, and I just made 60 pips. Like So that's my max target, 60, 80 pips. Um, I'm gonna, just going to trade this from the sell side. And the buy limits are down here. Here's the thing is, this is going to, now this is going to be the future prices to buy. Also the targets for the big guys that sold big up there. The guys that are going to handle a 100 pip swing. They got 200 pip stops. Maybe they're building a sell position up here. I don't know what's going to happen on this chart, but maybe this is distribution for them. They keep on selling this thing at the market every four hours. Oh, no, they're making their money back. See, now I got buy limits in here because I'm like, dude, this is ripe for the pickings. All of this is fresh territory. Even this, from here down, I would have buy limits here for the next four hours, eight hours, six hours, two hours, right there. This is no-brainer shit. I'm already long here, right, on this void, and I've already made the 40 pips here, so I'm not tied to any one position. I've got a blend of buys and sells, or I have a blend of buys. That's how I'm approaching it, because the market doesn't allow you to be precise because it's a big fucking mess. So that should be painfully obvious that the market's a big fucking mess. Now, now they're filling my buy limits. And if you held that top, the question is, are you that guy? This whole time I talked about we're selling here and people are shitting their pants above here. Well, guess what? That is now winning trade in this 120 pip psychotic sell windows. I just got filled on my buy limits there. Don't forget that I talked about. And I got buy limits pending here. So I got the 
I got the 10, the 20, the 30, the 40, 50 pips, the 8 pips, the 16, the 32 targets. I got the tight stops, the wide stops. Um, I do use a lot of bad ratios because I know I can make my 10 or 20, 30 pips with a 50 pip stop. But I also know I should have these greedy trades in where I have a 20 pip stop to make 50 pips. When we set the trap of all these limits and we could actually sit back and watch it unfold, uh, say on a 300K position, all 1Ks, we built a position up here. This is how it unfolds, like dominoes, we put, or even if, even um, Dominion if you prefer. Sell here. The scalpy welpies are built in, and then we have the big long targets. We let this whole thing unfold until we come into the glorious buy wick that I described earlier in the fucking uh, about two minutes ago. That I'm buying below this wick, and people are like, I just don't, I don't understand what you're doing. You gotta, you gotta get it, man. You gotta get it. And this sells here. See the sell window here? That's an order block. ICT talks about that. So I think you can see that, yes, we do want to look at the big picture here because when we see this big gush up in here, you got to realize these are all chances to sell into the void on the pullbacks or to go long and initiate into this thing. Oh, dude, they're going to take this out. Let's get long here. And yes, you can do that trade too. Hopefully you can see by this example, you need one currency with a bunch of trade plans and a bunch of different in the expirations. If this order expires in eight hours, this is a four hour chart. So if this is a, if I put an order in here that lasts eight hours, it's never going to fill. If it lasts all day, it would fill last 12 hours. It'll fill. That means that in uh, three bars, we're going to have 12 hours. So I put sell limits up in this pocket. The last 12 hours, we just got filled on that. If these orders here, I front run the market in these last 12 hours, buy, 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 buy. Um, this bottom order maybe lasts uh, 12 hours, which means you need to order. The market has to do one of these moves like this. Here's a pounding 12 hour move. If you put sell limits up here that last 12 hours, they just fill them. But if these last 12 hours, you got stopped out. If these only last four hours, as, so in a perf, this is the, the final component is that when the market's dropping at this rate of change and these orders are expiring, they're not going to be a liability. You're not going to overfill on the, on the up or down side. You're controlling the exposure of fill by the expiration dates and times on the tickets they have expirations typically i will run so here i'm going to run four hour expirations really close to the market you're not going to fill that ticket if i put a sell limit here when the market's here and it lasts four hours no fill but if it lasts all day yes because all day long this is always going to be a good price but since i'm babysitting the market I'm probably long on something into that. And I see it coming up and I'm like, okay, let's put some six hours and eight hour tickets. Eight hours is my max, which is two bars on this chart. So I got buy limits here last for eight hours. And I can put them all the way down, which means that market has to go down two bars heavy in and retrace. So I'm, I can already see on this rehearsal that, oh, I wouldn't have got filled on that. And people say, well, what do you do about this? I'm not getting filled on that because my orders only last eight hours at max because I'm babysitting the market. Or at least I'm checking in every eight hours. You can't look at it every fucking eight hours. So I can put these tickets in that last eight hours. Here, no, like no fill there, right? Um, let me zoom in and do an explicit view. Okay, so here, we put in the sell limits. Okay, buy limits for eight hours. Based on this price, I just put a cluster in, which means we have to go down two bars to get filled. Well, we went down, we got filled. <laughs> it's a, that's it. That's the trade. Now, I put a sell limit here. 
for four hours. After this bar completes, those sun limits are gone. Now we put buy limits in. I'll, I'll just uh, try to mimic what's going on here. And so we just got filled on that buy limit and the tickets disappear. No cash out. Now we're going to put a sell limit up here for four hours, uh, eight hours, eight hours, eight hours, eight hours, even four hours up here. So th the reason why this trade, they just filled that, right? They just filled that ticket. Now these tickets have expired. These are gone. We're short, right? We're short. Now, I'm going to put a sell limit up here for eight hours. And no fill. But those cells up here made how many pips again? And I had a buy limit here for, say, eight hours. So I did get filled on that because two bars down. Now I got sell limits for the next four hours all the way up here. Pretty aggressive, pretty aggressive. Let's just assume I got filled on a rack like that. Now this is going to expire. I'll try to get the expiration. Okay, we just got filled on a cell limit that lasts for four hours. So four hours is basically like this window here. Um, it just lasts for this much time into the future. Okay, we sold, 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 sold. Now we're cashing out on the pre-built-in targets. And that just uh, that just disappeared. So now we're going to do the same thing here. We got buy limits pending here for eight hours, uh, maybe four hours here. Sell limits above this price for eight hours and... So now we come with some four hour buy limits here. So I'm always constantly coming uh, above and below different. It's like this kind of back and forth game. Sell limits here. Okay, we get to fill in the buy limits. We got a big kahuna buy limits here. And I'm just going to imagine 12 hours, even though I don't usually run the 12 hours because I'm probably going to put those in right now. I'm going to put the buy limits in for eight hours and four hours here now. Getting filled. Taking the 10 pips, taking the 20, uh, 30, 50, now buy limits getting filled. And we're going to take the first 10 pips, wait for that 20 pip, 30 pip winner now. And there we go, we made our 30 pips. Maybe get 40, but actually what I would do now is put buy limits in again. So. Now, I have buy limits pending. They're getting filled right now again. So I want to buy even more. Yes, we're going to buy real deep, and I'm building a long position. Buying more there. Okay, every four hours. It's down, I could buy, I suppose. Oh, it just got filled, and just got filled really big because of this wick. Real big on that wick. Big, big, big fill here. Oh, just giant buys right giant buys the cash out is getting bigger it's, uh, it's psychologically difficult to buy this now you're at 40 pips underwater so to speak now you're going to wait to cash out and hopefully you cash out something because now you got enough money to put buy limits again and keep doing the buy limits here in front see okay now this is the cash out the big kahuna target's going to be maybe up here doesn't have to be though. See, my system don't rely on that. Cause I, I just, I'm making money the, during this phase right here. Now I just bought that new low. Oh geez. Every four hours, man, four hour scripts, beautiful. Four hour and eight hour scripts. So we definitely are long here. Now we're gonna wait till we get to here and we're about to take the whole thing off the table. Now I will cash out there. I could have sell limits that are starting to get filled here, but mm, I'm probably going to wait for my wins. My This giant long position I built underneath this wick is just cashed out. Now I'm going to put buy limits in again, honestly. 
And I'm going to buy, I'm going to trade that. So I like these four hour slam dunks because that to me is just easy money. Easy. Look, I just bought that. It's so easy. Come on. Buying again. Just buy. This is, this nonsense noise is so much money. Not putting a breakout. Not trading a break for our breakout. No. I'm sure, I'm sure it makes money, right? No, I'm long. No, I'm cashing out. Mm, cashing out. Mm, cashed out. <laughs> okay. Sold that maybe. Maybe sold that for a scalp. Okay. We sold that for a scalp. We made our 10, 20 pips. Okay. Got it. Anyways, for our chart, that's how I trade it. That's how I make money. Simple as that. Two hours and 20 minutes of pure insanity. 